Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, I was reading the Riyadh Riyadh Salihin book mentioned in the lecture last night. I cannot adhere to all of the rules 100% of the time. Please forgive me. What do we do when we realize we cannot always uphold these beautific set of rules brought to us by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Walaykum as salam. Inshallah, were you the same person who asked to read it? And then you say you read it and now you, you can't adhere to it, then why did you read it? Means go slow in life. Means don't ask that which would cause you harm. The one who reads too many law books and is not said to be a lawyer is going to have a, a difficult course in life. So you go slowly in your understanding. If you read all of the city laws and say, I'm just going to study city laws, you probably can't walk on the street because if you pass over here it's a ticket. If you do over here you're going to get a ticket. If you do like this you're going to get fined. So there's a lot of laws on the books so everyone has to study according to their level of understanding. So when you want to know a particular subject that you have a concern about, you're traveling, how long can you wear your khufs and what's the purpose of the khuf, specific items, you read about it quickly. What is the reality of zikr? Then you see all the hadith about purifying the heart. So these are very general and, and very deep but you don't have to sit there studying a, a law book and then saying, I can't do it. But if you're the one who asked and you read it slowly to the things that are essential for the questions that you have in life. And if you're going to be a lawyer then you should enroll in actually a, a real jurisprudence course and, and that's going to be a, a different path in life and, and that has its requirements as a result. But for everyday life it's enough to read the shaykh's books, learn how to do your meditation, the, learn from the, the app on how to do the namaz, the salah, the du'as and anything else. InshaAllah they'll have the Riyah Salihin for any questions on, on the hadith of zikr, the hadith of the heart, the hadith of giving and charity and sadaqah. So it shouldn't be hard. People make everything hard. They, they want to put their hand here they go like this. You want to move your hand all the way around to bring it to your mind, just, just go like this, everything should be easy, nothing complicated inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah It was mentioned that we are within the energy spectrum of whom we love. Does this mean our love for our shaykh keeps us in his energy spectrum always? As long as you can keep that love and that you, you act by that love. Remember this love is not the I love you. And then keep, keep texting, I love you on the videos and on every email, it's not that, that's, that's, that's the material world, love. Love is when your actions are based on love, that you change yourself, you want to be an ambassador for Sayyidina Muhammad that you exhibit good characteristics, you go out and serve humanity and say that for my love for the shaykh and love for Prophet love for the Divine, I want to show my characteristics and that the love is based on the actions not words. So the words are for people's entertainment but the shaykhs they're looking at the actions. If you're sincere support, 
If you're sincere, share the articles, share the things, do, to, do whatever you can to be of service, to be noticed, to be participating and that's the importance of love. Now if you keep that love, that's when we get into the frequencies of attuning. So scientifically it's completely understood, we said programmers know technical computer and uh, engineering, electronic engineering's know, right? So you can program a TV remote by becoming the dummy remote. It has all the same buttons, it learned on how to be nothing, excuse the word dummy but that's what their technology people call it. Then they call their computer slave units, why? Because there's one unit that's operating and the other ones are mimicking and imitating. This is all from the reality of attuning. When you attune yourself to someone of a higher vibration and you keep that love with your actions and good character and you keep meditating to connect with their energy, what happens? When you keep their way and keep their khuluq and keep their character, it's like you've been attuned by them. As soon as you meditate and keep their presence, their vibration is continuously in your presence. As a result it's vibrating your entire reality and it's changing you to their frequency. As a result you begin to vibrate at a much, much higher frequency. That's why Prophet described that one hour of tafakkur is like 70 years of worship. That's Einstein's theory, right? If you go the speed of light come back it would be have 70 years but that was given by Prophet 1500 years ago. But that one person who's tafakkur is like 70 years means their vibration and the speed and the movement of their souls are so powerful that Prophet is describing it's like somebody that prayed 70 years and that's just his one hour of meditation. So then the shiukhum they teach that reality that every hour and moment and every day they're in that reality and that dress. They're moving at this reality, their energy and their soul. So as soon as you call upon and, and ask to be present with those energies, they're changing you, they're vibrating and, and, and altering your energy field. And Apple can do it, so I'm sure God's servants have much more power, right? You put an earphone and the vibration of the energy frequency of the earphone is destroying your ears and destroying your brain. You turn on your microwave, it's cooking you and the food inside there. How is it doing that? You don't see it. So they tell you, don't turn on the microwave and keep staring at it or you're cooking your eyes because the energy inside the microwave is not limited to the microwave. It doesn't just stay in there because it's scared. You press that and it goes everywhere but you don't see it. And I told you, you can change the remote on your television change the channel but you didn't see a light go and affect that television. That's not supernatural forces, how, how, how did your remote do that? So of course then when somebody connects with God's creation and if God gave them and dressed them to be more powerful than a television remote, more powerful than a microwave and much more powerful than Apple iPhone. As soon as you connect with them their energy field is present and begin to cook you but in a good way. Because when the light of heavenly creatures come, they burn devils. The light of devilly creations burn humans. So the devils design these technologies. We all have microwaves in our homes so it's not like, oh shaykh it doesn't have microwave. We have phones, microwaves, we have everything you can imagine. But whatever the devil made is meant to cook you. Whatever Allah made is designed to cook devils. So as soon as you call upon the shaykh, his microwave will begin to cook all the devils in the area. And that's why the person can't sit to meditate because the devil within it in the person says, no, 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 not now, not now, go make a sandwich. Then they get distracted and they'll go. So that's why it's not an easy process that they heat the person up. If they can sit within that field of energy consistently, consistently 
That's when the hadith becomes alive for them. You're like 70 years of worship, why? Because if you were able to sustain that energy, when the shaykh's energy comes and opens a portal for you, that was the talk on the portals, opens a frequency of energy that now keeps you present in that reality. How much time has transpired in that heavenly energy? When we don't understand there's no time in the heavenly realm. So how long were you in that meditation? How long were you in that presence? And in that energy where did they take the person and then bring them back? And that enters into immense realities of, of light and heavenly light which can't be understood but slowly people of earth will understand because of the technology of devils. They have portals now opening in many places and people will begin to see them. They have machines that are hydrogen colliders, uh, what's this uh, CERN device? Why? To cause a disruption in an energy field, to tear a fabric to move towards these dimensions or to bring something of much lower and demonic energies into this fabric and into this veil. So they are doing it by imitation. But Allah gave it to the heavens. So Prophet described, sit with the circles of paradise. Means what? They're portals of paradise. Those whom gather for the zikr of Allah they're portals into paradise. And what is that? What is the reality of paradise? If people then study what is paradise? Anything that goes to paradise can never leave. So means anyone who entered in to a circle of zikr if just for five minutes will be dressed by a paradise reality that they never could have imagined. And they may not understand it until they take the last breath from this earth, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, when us women connect our heart to Haja Amina, can we still be within the light of our teacher that we see and follow? Yes, definitely. You follow the shaykh, you listen to the teachings, you, you keep that respect. But to visualize yourself, the correct manners is to visualize Hajj Amina and say that, Hajj Amina, please dress me from your light and keep me under your nazar. And with her light, you keep the reverence of the shaykh and listening to the teachings and, and the guidance. And that's what they've requested and that should be a very strong connection because she's a very loving soul, very powerful soul. And then all the way up to Sayyidatina Fatima Tazari Salaam inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Being a sensitive person, is there a way to not absorb other people's emotions that affect me and how to be in present moment consistently? Yeah, this is a practice. There's no how to, it's just a matter of struggling, struggling, struggling. That at every moment, remember we're talking about shaitan, so at every moment he's going to tie two ropes on you. One the past to make you depressed, one about the future to make you anxious. So TikTok seems to specialize in the anxious. So the more that you know the observance of what's happening with TikTok is making people anxious, right? So I think the news and life is probably about depression, the backward rope and these social medias are the forward rope of anxiety. These two ropes shaitan has grabbed people. So everybody's thinking about all the things they could have done and would have made their life better and the choices they could have made which is rubbish because you know you don't cry over spilt milk. So you cut that continuously every day, just throw that out as garbage. But the fear of the future becomes a difficult in which shaitan is continuously telling you, this is going to collapse, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. And in reality everything going to collapse, that's a given. Because one day I'm going to die and there won't be anything anyways. So it's a matter of living right now if I'm connected because everything going to collapse for me tomorrow if my heart stops. What's the difference? 
So then I have to live for this day and I keep having to train myself, teach myself that it's all in Allah's hands, hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel. And then you begin to make your zikr, hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi aliyun azeem. And you make that hundred times a day if you have this anxiety of the future coming. So everything is in Allah's hands but are you good with Allah is the question. Did you give what you're supposed to give? Did you do what you're supposed to do? Do you live the life of service that you're supposed to live? And if you think that you are and you did and you're good with your Lord and you say that on a daily basis then it's a matter of on that day meditating, doing good, taking care of the things you have to take care of and live for that day. And if that day was good alhamdulillah and you live every day like that waking up trying to control past there's nothing you can do about it, don't even think about it, it's already gone. The future one is the difficult but some people are always in the past. Every time you meet them they did this to us, they did like this to us, they said, but it's finished, they did it, it's finished with, you know, it's gone. But they relive it in their mind continuously which is very dangerous because that's what makes people to be then depressed. So those ropes have to be cut from shaitan. When we can cut the rope what happens? The person's meditating that day, feeling good about their meditation means their soul is flying, they're connected and they feel the connection and the energy. And that's what's important because maybe that day when they feel good and meditate and read and contemplate, if you keep thinking about the past, oh, I was well, t- 10 years ago I could have done this, I was younger then, I could have done like this, I could have done like that, I could have done like that. You lost the day, you lost all the energy of that day and maybe God was going to give you good news that day. So that's all shaitan wants. Well why are you thinking about the past? It's gone, it's a disruption in your faith, don't even think like that, it's gone, it's past. If it was bad Allah forgave you, look you're still alive. If Allah didn't want you He could have had a truck hit you. So you're still alive, it's finished the past. You cut these ropes and how shaitan is playing with the person. Then as you meditate that day, you contemplate, you feel the goodness of that day, maybe that day is the day that God gives you an inspiration as a reward for that day. And they live day to day for a good tajalli and a, a, a good khatir, a good uh, tajalli, good, good experience. And that's what's living in the presence and the, the meaning of that, especially in a very busy life. Now if we were secluded and living in the mountains that would be much easier. But you don't get the reward that you get by living amongst people. If the shaykhs wanted to seclude themselves, live on a mountain, think about nothing but a sheep and a goat and, and some milk, it'd be very easy. You'd be sit there, you'd be cut off from worrying about anybody, you do your zikr and you get your milk and that's it. But Allah says, no go and fight against yourself and go into the city and help people and help yourself and keep yourself solid. And that becomes the continuous, continuous uh, struggle in life inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam Shaykh please forgive my ignorance. Is it permissible to put the SMC Tawi's necklace on non-Tariqah Muslims and non-Muslims as protection or are they only for Tariqah people? Yeah, the Naqshbandi Tawis and, and these articles is as long as people are willing to respect them. So when you just throw Tawis upon people and they do all, all, all sorts of inappropriate things, we've, we described that many times, then that's not a good idea. So anything that in you, common sense has to tell you, anything that you feel is, is, has a reverence and, and importance for you. You have to expect people and teach people how to respect it. If something is important to you and they're going to disrespect it, why would you do it? So if your father gave you something extremely precious and you decide to give to your neighbor and they're going to throw it into the trash, you wouldn't do that. So there's no difference from the heavens. The heavens is more that if we believe something to be holy then we give it to people who will respect it with that reverence. That way it's not disrespected and then we're responsible because of their disrespect or they threw it in the trash, they did like this and that, so inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi 
Sayyidi, do you have any recommendations for someone who wants to accept Islam and can we give bayat? Yeah, the whole night was about that. The whole talk was that, inshaAllah. At the end we'll give the bayat, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Can we call upon your madad when talking to someone that seems to want to bring our energy down? Yeah, that's the whole energy teaching and the meditation teaching. You have to get the meditation book, read the book, read the energy book. That You have to do that all the time, not just on one person trying to bring your energy down. This whole world is trying to bring energy down. So every day you learn how to wash, keep your wudu, have your taweez, keep your muraqabah, keep your contemplation and anytime you're… you're always in that state and anytime you're in an extraordinary difficulty then you make your madad of the shaykh, visualize the shaykh and keep that energy around and to be present and to, to combat all sorts of negativity at all times. So the assumption is everything is designed to take the energy down. Those were the talks that we gave on frequency. Everything around us, your microwave is trying to take you down by a person. Your telephone is trying to cook your head, it's, 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 it's designed at the frequency in which your, your cellular brains are active. So everything is trying to, to cook us and to radiate us. It's a matter of how are you going to protect yourself? Are you going to throw them all away and run to the woods? It's not going to happen, maybe some people may try to do that. Well why don't you counter it by doing your practices, doing all your energy practices, grounding yourself. You hold your phone and the phone puts out too much energy at certain times, I don't know they increase the frequency and you feel your hands are burning. Well then immediately you get your salt rock and you hold the, the Himalayan salt or the rose quartz and you try to counter that energy. Hold something from God, means you get an orange or, or pomegranate that has uh, you know 500 seeds in there, how blessed is a pomegranate? You know you read uh, and study the hadith of pomegranates on what happens with the juice of a pomegranate, how it burns devils. And if you hold the pomegranate and you sit in your meditation because every seed in there has a power from Allah to bring a life force for that, that pomegranate to blossom. One seed may bring a thousand fruits and each fruit has uh, 200 seeds within it. How God multiplies with this is immense its reality. From one seed thousands of fruits and trees can come, from one seed. And then people are worried if they give one dollar will God give a return. He says, every day I do this all around you. Allah is in the business of multiplying, everything around us of creation multiplies. It's just humans that have the, the lack of faith that it'll happen. So you hold those for the meditation and for energy and energy practices inshaAllah and ground against negative energies. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa do you have any recommendations for us on how we should eat during Ramadan to maximize the spiritual benefit? I have a recommendation that you should read the articles on Ramadan. So there's articles on Ramadan and you should go to the Nur Muhammad website and type in Ramadan and preparing for Ramadan, read the articles of Ramadan that you're going to fast with ears, eyes, hands, feet, breath and mouth. And the fasting is from all senses. It's not just the, the food and, and try to eat moderate amounts of food and to do your prayers. Ramadan's power is in the Salatul Tarawih. So that becomes lost for a lot of people. Their, their whole focus of Ramadan is that they're starving in the daytime, they eat excessive amounts of food at the night time and they're happy with just the, 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 the fasting they did. But the reality of Ramadan and the secret of Ramadan is in the Salatul Tarawih, the Qiyam al-Layl, the nighttime prayers. If they're home by themselves, they pray the nighttime prayers, it's a great source of their meditation. So they, they break their food, eat a little bit light, you don't have to overindulge. 
But as a result you have the ability to do your 20 rakahs. And when you pray you can pray even on a chair if your legs are hurting or your health is not well. And you close off the light if you're praying at home and you pray and you meditate in those 20 rakahs. And Allah sends an immense stress of energy and qudra in those prayers. And then you drink and eat a little bit more and pray for, wait for your suhoor and then you begin your fast again. But don't leave the Salatul Taraweeh, the, the, the nighttime prayers, the meditation prayers at night. That's where the secret of Ramadan immense powers are coming inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Illa sharif al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa ali wa sahbihi kiram. Wala mi shaykhina fi tariqatin ashbandiyatul aliyya wa sa'iru sadatina siddiqeen al Fatiha. The Shabbat ya Rasul Kareem, inshaAllah on, on the charity side, Muslim charity. Dot com, inshaAllah we're preparing for Ramadan so anybody who can give please give generously for the iftar programs and the, the, that those packages have to go out before Ramadan. So I think in Pakistan there's a hundred family with 30 uh, days of supplies so few thousand dollars worth of foods going out into Pakistan, into India and uh, maybe Chicago areas and I think Asim has some people in LA. So those iftar packages and groceries we put them out before and then throughout we'll have the iftar and the breaking with the orphanages. But the actual food supplies we give a 30 day food box to families that, that can't afford food for Ramadan inshaAllah. So immense blessings takes away many difficulties from our own families and, and any sort of mix up in the fasting within our own homes by helping somebody else to fast and to, to to make their fasting to be much more blessed and easier. InshaAllah Allah expediate difficulties and, and uh, any incorrections that we have done and our families have done inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs. Our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.